Hey, bro. Hey, Gia. Hey. Yeah, I was in earlier, and I was like, hey, let me go back out and come back in. Ain't nobody here. <laughs> yeah. So I was rushing. My little brother moved in today. Okay. He moved in? Yeah. So that's he what I was saying. How old is he? 18. Okay. All right. All right. Good deal. Take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How was your day? It was good. Rose should be on here soon because she was um she was with me too. Okay. I'm trying to find a file. I had class earlier today, so I was there's a lot of stuff on my computer. Hmm. I was doing like Unix or something. You had a class on Unix? Yeah. Tell me about it. So like it's okay, so this the this the first day for us actually like trying to learn how to do stuff. So she had us like log into it, but we have to like use this terminal on MacBook. And it was like I'm like, dang, like I feel like I'm inside my computer or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm inside my computer or something because that's what it looks like. And then um Rose was like it looked like something off of a TV show. <laughs> Uh-huh. So yeah. It was so weird. Like it took us a minute to like get logged in and stuff. Uh -huh. Hello, Anita. Hello. Hello. How we doing? Doing well. Amen. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna give me one second. Anita, you had sent something, and I think it was by Facebook. I don't mm -hmm. have a Facebook account, so I can never see those. Oh, okay. All right. It was a word that they had up there. I thought you would enjoy it. And when Is that I right? send up, I send it out, and I don't even keep it for myself. Okay. All right. All right. A lot of times, it's word of inspiration. Uh-huh. And when I see it, I'm like, yeah. And then I just send it <laughs> out. And if you can get it, that's fine. Because I don't I don't retain them myself. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Miss um Miss Michelle, she sent the link earlier today, but I'm gonna just go ahead and resend it because I sent it to the Gmail as well. Okay. Um, did you know what page you were on? Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, if you start right there at um, let's see, let's start at question. You know where the questions are? Here or yep. Right here. Go down. Keep going down. Yeah. Page. So cause I'm gonna start at question number two. Okay. Yeah. I'll be right back. And I'll have you scroll up and down, or matter of fact, I got it right here. So, but yeah, just so they can see question number two. Now that'd be perfect. And is there anything after? No, okay. Okay, I'll be right back. All right. Hello, Holy Rose. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. 
here. How's the family coming along? You know, it's a work in progress. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It, but, it's, uh, yeah. You know, yes. you win most of those battles in the spiritual realm, right? Yeah. Through your prayer, your fasting, mentioning them by name, asking God to detach them from all the things that's in the bloodline that's not attached to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you're with your family, so you see specifically what it is so you can identify it, you know, more accurately. Yeah. So, and then also me just, um, I've just been practicing to learn how to love them, but from a distance, because I've learned that I kind of have to separate myself a bit um, mm -hmm. in order for me to grow. And continue yeah. to grow. Yeah, right. sometimes that's what you have to do. And, yeah. and there's, there's nothing wrong. Listen, you can love a lot of people. I, I love a whole lot of folk. I don't care for their ways. And so mm -hmm. I choose to love at a distance. Yeah. Because yeah. my soul is at stake. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I can't have nobody playing with that. Amen. Amen. Reminds me of Lot and Abraham. <laughs> Abraham's like, you know what? How about you go that way? <laughs> or if you go this way, I'll go that way. <laughs> I, don't, I don't dislike you, but I'm not sure how you do what you need. I'm finna go to the right. Yep, yep, yep. It's so, like, and I'll give you first dibs. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. If you want left, I'll do right. If you want right, I'll do left. Ain't right. no Listen, when people show you who they are, accept it, respect it, and keep it moving. Yeah. Amen. All right, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, six people on. We'll give a couple of more minutes and then we'll open up with prayer. So school has started. <laughs> Man. And I've read where some schools have already shut down behind COVID. Already. Already. Wow. Yep. Wow. You know, yep. it's sad. Remember when they took all that time away from school? They're just not getting the quality of education that was afforded to those of us who didn't have those interruptions. Right. Right. And it's unfortunate. Well, yeah. the whole the, I'm so glad I don't have children, young children in school today. Yeah. We're going to pray home. against COVID. We can't do it again. <laughs> can't do it again. Yeah, no, I'm not playing with COVID. I, I took a couple of shots only because my sister was sick and I had to take care of her and put her in a hospital. And I was around all kind of stuff. But yeah, no, I'm not taking nothing else for them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can go home. I'm safe here. All right. <laughs> my own Jones. I'm safe at home. Thank you so much. What's that game? We used to play tag and home base was always safe. <laughs> That's right. Home base is always safe. Uh huh. The safest place in the spot you can go is home. Yeah. Yes, Lord. But when you out amongst other people, you got to be mindful. Of, you know, I'm okay, but I don't know who I may compromise trying to be of assistance because we go to nursing homes and things like that. Now I may I may reconsider because we do go to nursing homes once a month. But right now, yeah, no, I'm not doing it. Because a lot of them have protocol anyhow. Um, and we wear masks up, up until we get ready to sing. We just remove them for that portion. And then when we get ready to leave, I put them back on. So. Hmm. 
All right, Sister Nita, you want to open us up in prayer, please? Sure. Thank you. All heads bowed, eyes closed, and we're at an attitude of gratitude. Most gracious and eternal God, our Father, once again, your children humble themselves before your awesome presence, first and foremost, to say thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Father. Thank you for giving us use of our limbs, a portion of health and strength. Our mind is fixed and regulated and on Jesus. Yes. Thank you, God, for blessing us uh, in our going out and coming in on today. Lord, hoping that we were a light in Thank this you, darkness Jesus. as we um, meet those uh, on our task of going to work, going to the store, whatever it is that you have placed our hand to do today. We hope that we pleased you, giving a stranger a smile and a salutation. Father, you, you said, show the love of Jesus so that we will show the people that we belong to you. Lord, we ask that if there's anything in us that is not like you, that you remove it. Yes. Strengthen us, God. Take everything negative from us and pour into all of your love and positivity into our bodies and our lives. Father, allow us to position ourselves to do your work. Whatever the task is that you would have us to do, Lord, we are willing vessels. Right now, God, we're asking you to strengthen the speaker of tonight, God. Jesus to bring forth a rhema word, to fill us up, God, and to give us a deeper knowledge and understanding of exactly who you are yes. and our purpose. For Lord, we know that each and every day that we dwell in your word and we read your word and we hear your word and we apply your word, we get a revelational knowledge of how deep, deep, deep rooted it looks surfacey but lord the more we know of you your word your word is so rich and it runs so deep and we want all the more of it nothing goes by happenstance lord and we thank you for this time and this opportunity to gather to get more revelational knowledge of your word god yes to apply it more deeply to ourselves and to freely give it to those who seek to know you in the pardoning of their sins. Yes. We ask that you continue to bless Pastor Van and Sister Michelle while they're vacationing, God, uh, Brother Bud and, and Sister Debrion, their families, God, cover them, Father. Yes. Allow them this time of fellowship and relaxation, knowing that even though they're doing that, they are still on the battlefield for the Lord. Yes. We thank you, God, for the rising of the sun and the going down of the same. Father, when it rains, we thank you for the rain. Because we know if the sun always shined and we never had rain, there would not be balance. And we burn up. Yes. So we thank you for an Every circumstance that we find ourselves in, Lord, we count it all joy. Yes. For you are yet in the midst. We ask that you continue to lead and guide us into all truth, Father. Yes. And that you find us faultless. Thank you. Before your throne of grace. Those that are on a bed of affliction, an uh, ailment in the body, even right now, we're asking the healing hand of the master physician to do what only you can do. For those that are going through a mourning season, God, for whatever the reason is, they have lost a job, a loved one, or they're just personally going through, we ask that you take a moment to let them know that you are yet with them, God. Yes, Lord. We ask that you continue, Father, to bless us on every lean inside. God, please, don't take your hand off of us. Oh. Please, Jesus. For we know if you do, we are lost. Yes. For you are our source and our resource. Lord, when we recognize that you are all that we have, we know that you are all 
that we need. We ask that you continue to bless those firemen, ambulance workers, yeah. police officers that are on the post 24 seven. God, give them the word, yes. give them knowledge, give them the strength and cover them and their families, Lord. Those that are in the military, cover them and their families, Lord. Yes. Those who don't know you in the pardon of their sin, send us out, God, so that we can reach the lost before the door is shut, never to open again. Yes. Yeah. In the many blessings of the night, we ask in the matchless name of Jesus, who is the yeah, Christ. And all of your children are in agreement, and we say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for that, sister. Amen. So I believe we are on part five of Israel's first female monarch, Athalia. Um, mm -hmm. First, we want to give all thanks and glory to our Lord and Savior, who is Jesus Christ, um, for salvation and going out and winning souls into the kingdom of God yes. for his will, for his decree. Um, we want to give all honor and glory to our past and first lady, like Sister Nita just so openly stated that they're on vacation. And um, I know there's a storm going through that area, so what, I'm sure they might be having some difficulties. I spoke to them probably about an hour and a half ago, maybe not even that long ago. So um, I know that they were concerned about the storm, so that is a concern. So we'll keep them in prayer for that. Um, we definitely want to um, remember to reach out to brother and sister Adams, um, mm. whose anniversary was last weekend, and they spent all weekend celebrating their uh, celebrating their anniversary. So God bless them on that. Uh, tomorrow, I believe, is Gary's birthday. So when yeah. he comes on, when the yeah. uh, you know opportunity presents itself, let's be sure to remember him as well. And if there's anyone else that we left out, we'll be sure to address them as well. All right. Amen. Israel. Amen. Israel. Uh, speaking, I, I, I just had to interject. That thing just shot right in my spirit. You said they were concerned. And, and when you said that, the word came, said, my soul is anchored in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. So Amen. Already, it's already okay because my soul is anchor. And please, we, we will not disrespect the fact that God know where every one of his children are. Yes. And when the storm was raging, when Jesus was asleep on the mm -hmm. boat. That's right. And the disciples woke him up with the question, carest thou not that we should perish? That's right. Amen. Oh, you a little fat. You woke me up in the midst of the storm. <laughs> <laughs> he was sleeping yes, you have yes, to yes. the sea laying beside you and all you have to do is call his name and he will speak peace amen to that situation amen so, that all joy no, I'm, amen <laughs> i'm with you 100 in the name of jesus christ lord we do speak peace while they are in the vicinity of that storm, that it will not come near them, nor will it harm them. Absolutely. Amen. I appreciate Absolutely. that, sis. Gee, if Gary, is, uh, sent, he sent a text saying that he can't log in. He doesn't have a password. Um, if you could send him a text, um, okay. I'll give him instructions of what to do and how to do. Okay. All right. So if there's no more, no more administrative issue we'll go ahead and move on let me see who we got that was me i was trying to see how it was for everyone else trying to log in okay this I, this brought me right in today it brought me right into and i sent yeah. him a text letting him know that he ne needed to um on sunday that he needed to re um Ooh, reset his password with uh zoom yeah, because okay. once he did that and put the number in, it would okay. bring up and he shouldn't have any more problems. 
I think mm-hmm. it may be because people have to create, like, create a profile, like a Zoom profile. I yeah. think that might be why. Yep. I'm going to send them a text now. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Israel's first lady monarch. So question number two in the questions was, how did Athalia become so wicked? And now that we've covered all that we've covered, anyone want to take a shot at that and give us a review? And for those who have not been the one, um, to kind of bring them up to date on, we're talking about Jezebel's daughter. Her name was Athalia. Everybody has always heard of Jezebel. No one knew about Athalia. She was Israel's first lady monarch. And come to find out, she was even more wicked than Jezebel. But no mm. one knew. How does she become that way? And we are on part five, I believe, today. So part one, part two, part three, and part four, we made it crystal clear on who Jezebel was. We went back to the sons of God and the daughters of men. We even talked about Genesis chapter three, enmity between his two seeds, because God had created man and his image and his likeness, and everybody in a divine council did not appreciate that. So a rebel in the garden, but I'm gonna stop right there because I asked you all. Anybody want to take a stab at it? Well, you How know, the become so wicked. There's a there's a um poem that teaches us that children learn what they live. Mm. And they live out what they've learned. Uh-huh. So, you know, we all got bad habits and we picked up spirits and things from our parents. Yes. And it doesn't mean that we have to stay the way that we we started. But that's she- right born into this wickedness because both her mother and her father were wicked. Yes. But she had it on both sides of the fence. She had a godless mother who worshipped uh, Baal and Asherah uh-huh. and uh, talked negatively, negatively uh, when it came to the authority of God. She had a father who was a wicked king who knew of God and yet disrespected his lineage by following after the other evil kings instead of seeking the righteousness of God for himself. And so having a double combination of wicked on both sides, she, uh, inherited it Uh and the word tells us uh david penned that we were uh born in iniquity yes we were born in sin so we 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 already got a strike against us number one being born in sin but but when you have the abundance of that sin uh being taught on a day-to-day basis you know, they tell you garbage in, garbage out. Uh-huh. But evilness and negativity, that's all you know. And you become a product of that with which the environment with it is that you're in. Yes. So she had in a she had a a, a combination, if you will, as we all do. And yet we did not have to stay in that deficit place of sin That's right. because there is a savior yes whose name is jesus amen we call on that name and repent of our sin he said that he stands at the door and knocks and if we open that door he will come in and sup with us yes there is a way out of the situation but you know some folk love sin. Yes, they do. <laughs> like a second skin. Uh huh. Because they have benefited so much. You know, there was a rich ruler that came to Jesus and said, Oh, I've done all these things since I was a boy. And Jesus said, No, but you're still missing something. Uh-huh. 
Give up all your earthly possessions and follow me. Well, the rich ruler couldn't do that because he could not see himself aside from the wealth. Her wicked father could not see himself aside from the misdeeds that he was doing to become a righteous king because he thought he would lose what he had. So he allowed the things that he he acquired in in his deficit of wickedness to become the God that he was serving. That was his bail. And because he was profiting uh, profiting so much from Baal, he didn't want to relinquish Baal and turn to Christ because he thought all that he would have, he would lose. But I, I'm going to tell you something my grandmother told me. She said, baby, and she was a Christian woman and a minister. Uh-huh. Some you got to lose everything. Yes. In order to gain everything. Mm-hmm. And Paul said, count it all as dumb. Uh-huh. Because now I am a servant. I am a slave to Christ Jesus. So whatever situation I find myself in, if I have an abundance, it's because God gave it to me. If I have nothing, God is still beside me in the nothingness. Anywhere I go, God is already with me. So guess what? I already have everything that I need. Amen. 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 Now, according to the study, Holy Rose, where does this wickedness start at? Gonna be honest. I'm sorry, I, we didn't hear one. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know. But okay. um the reason why I had my hand up was um because of what um sister Anita was saying, um, especially when you, you know, what your parents raise you up being and how they act and what how you see them act and you take on certain spirits. Uh-huh. And I'm very thankful to say, um, what was it, two weeks ago was my 20th birthday and I was with Uncle Bud. I was, I was with, I was with Uncle Bud. Uh-huh. Um, what is it? Um, Auntie Deb, I was with Pastor Van and Miss, um, Michelle, and I was tearing. And though I did not receive the Holy Spirit yet, um, I'm very blessed and thankful to say that I received deliverance from some of those generational curses. Thank you. And especially, um, what is it? Um, control, the spirit of control that my that my mom had on me. Um, mm-hmm. And with, and I will say for me, Um, especially being spiritually open to seeing all the all of that control and how much it has affected me negatively and how much it has held me back going when I went back home it was something that like I had to now that I've now that I've you know been the now that my spiritual eye has been open to you know this control Mm -hmm. Um, it was definitely a bit challenging for me to adjust and learn how to act with my family but because I did not want to fall back into that control so Mm -hmm. for me um I've just been really practicing on not to um one that I can't take on their problems I can't take on their issues because that's what's going on in their life. The only thing that I really can do about it is pray for them. That's right. So really realizing that and really just praying for them and not um, not being controlled into being placed in their issue mm-hmm. or in the, in the you know midst of the drama mm-hmm. and that has nothing to do with me. So mm-hmm. for me, that's something that I've... Um, been practicing so i just wanted to share that amen thank you for that and and let me just throw this in there and it's within the question when you know the question was how did athalia become so wicked right 
Mm -hmm. And we definitely agree that, you know, we become what we're exposed to, kind of like guilty by association, so to Mm -hmm. speak, right? Yeah. But then, you know, when we witness to people, one of the things we have to understand, because Christ tells me, do I speak with tongues of many angels on 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 4? Do I prophesy? Do I preach? I can do all these wonderful things things in the name of Jesus, but if I don't do it in love, and sometimes it's hard to execute the mission of love unless you understand the whole picture, not just a part of the picture. And the whole picture is that a lot of people, keep in mind, so when the question is, how did Athalia become so wicked? The starting point is God created us in his image and his likeness, right? Genesis 1, 26, 27, all right? Then we get to Genesis chapter three. A rebel apparently had a problem with us and what our inheritance was and who we were going to be, even to the point where we were going to judge angels. Let me say that again and say it in the right context. We are. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Zechariah chapter 3, the book of Revelation. We are going to judge angels. And some of them felt that we were just basically a bunch of mud mud pies that had a spirit breathed into us. And they resented that. And they rebelled. And not only did they rebel, they said, I'll show you how precious your little seed is. Because in Genesis chapter 3, enmity Verse 15, between thy seed and the serpent seed. Well, we didn't know that the serpent had a seed until we did our Bible study on how the serpent had a seed, right? I know that was enlightening to a lot of people, but it wasn't our perspective. It was what the word of God showed us, right? Yeah. So now that we know that there's two seeds, there are two seeds. There's the serpent seed, according to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, and there's our seed. And we know from the book of Daniel that that seed became mixed through the men and the women who, when God said, do not have anything to do with those people, do not marry their daughters, don't, you know, just stay away from them completely. We couldn't do that. So the mixture came from the sons of God, the daughters of men. The things that they were taught, what did they, what did, what did the sons of God get uh, judged on from God? Having sex with women, human women, teaching them sorceries, witchcraft, seductions, all kinds of the secret arts. I always say it was the unclassified version of what they taught. And that came through the bloodline. The flood happened. And we said, well, how did it get on? other side of the flood and then we think it was in part two where we unpacked how it got on the other side of the flood right and we realized when the scripture says that ham uncovered his mother's nakedness i mean his father's nakedness leviticus chapter 20 verse 11 teaches us what that he slept with his mother and his mother if you trace the lineage of his mother she was from the seed of cain right and Ham slept with her and it produced what we call the uh, Canaan. When Canaan was born, you know, and here you have Noah, he wakes up from being drunk, realize what had happened, and he, a, a character's introduced Canaan. Noah wakes up and cursed him. And, he, and, and unless you understand Leviticus 20 and 11 and how it applies to that scripture, you're not sure what the scripture means when it says. Ham uncovered his father's nakedness. But that's when we study, we learned that, okay, he slept with his mother. And Noah cursed the offspring, the child that was born from them. Now, the thing about the scripture, you'll read from one verse to the next verse. And even though it's you just read verse five and verse six, and you're thinking it's all in that same moment, it doesn't always work out chronologically like that with the scripture. With the scripture, the next verse could be about 30, 40 years later, okay? But in any event, and and then when you read, you know, some of these other texts, it gives you the details. And that's when you find out, like Genesis 6, 1 through 4, man, the whole book of Enoch gives you the details, not just a chapter, but the whole book gives you the details 
So Genesis 6, 1 through 4. But it, it reminds you of in the scripture when it says, if Jesus, if they had wrote everything that Jesus did, there would not be enough books on this earth to contain the things that he had done. So a lot of times we just get the abbreviated version of an outline of what happened. But when we study, we go back and find out the details. Mm -hmm. So when we still are on the question, how does she become so wicked? So the characteristic from the fallen ones, the things that they taught these rebels, and I say that word and I pause because when we think of all the rebellious spirits that we deal with today, whether it's children to parents, whether it's wife to husband, whether it's husband to God, whether it's a husband loving and providing and taking care of his family. And we're not rebelling. You know, I use those names, but God said, no, you're not rejecting these people. You're rejecting me when you do this. And that all stems from what happened, A, in the Garden of Eden, B, Genesis 6, verse 1 through 4, and C, even on the other side of the flood, here you have, and we know because we read what well, we assigned it as a homework to read Leviticus chapter 18, Leviticus chapter 20, and even Deuteronomy chapter 18, because these are all the things that the Canaanites were doing. And these are the people that God said have absolutely nothing to do with them. Don't marry them. Don't touch them. Just don't, don't, you know. And then when we went to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, when a non-believer links up with a believer or a believer links up with a non-believer and it tells us that lest their children be unclean and we're talking about the unclean spirits that all of that residue past like to call it fairy dust all that fairy dust have come down and through the bloodline everything that anita said everything that you just finished saying holy rose so we just want to make sure that we understand that no one just woke up one day and decided I was going to be evil today. Or, you know, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed or whatever excuses we like to give when people are evil. Because we're going to go somewhere. And it's in the book of Galatians. The scripture says, you don't know a tree by its fruit. And we read last week that my people, my sheep, know my voice. In a stranger's voice, they will not listen to. So I think it's so important that when the scripture says that by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, that we, as the sons and daughters of God, that we, because if we don't study the scripture, if we don't meditate on the scripture, if we don't know what God said, the enemy is always going to win because he's always going to be one step ahead of us because he's going to, you know, what he tell Eve? <laughs> and Eve was a little confused. And, and then she said, the serpent beguiled me, Lord. And, and it's going to happen again and again and again. So just to be clear, yes, everything that y'all said is right. And I just wanted to make sure that we also included how it started, how it trickled. And even to this day, that spirit has survived because we were at Matthew chapter 15. I think in uh, part three, Matthew chapter 15, when Jesus had encountered the woman who had a daughter with a vexed spirit, she was from Sidon. Canaan's, the one who Noah had cursed his son, well, Canaan's firstborn was Sidon. Sidon, Jezebel's dad, was the king of the Sidonian. So Sidon being the root road in Sidonian, he was the king over there. And they had Jezebel. So all of that trickled all the way. And it didn't stop with Athalia and Jezebel and Ahab. It comes all the way to us. Even in Matthew 15, now when the New Testament, when this young lady comes up to Jesus, and she's a lady from that area, that land where Jesus, well, God sends the 12 spies through Moses, spy out this land, because this is the land that I promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 that I'm going to give you and your descendants this land right here and, and then we learn what was occupying that land what was occupying that land 
were the Canaanites. And who were the Canaanites? They were hybrids. And now we're talking about on the other side of the flood, but yet you have these giant clans, all those people that God is real clear about, let's have absolutely nothing to do with them. So that's spiritually, that's naturally, but let's, let me read this to you. I was reading today, and, and before I read it, the, the question is, while in the womb, what do we learn when we're in the womb and as we develop? What type of things are we learning? Miss Cornish, do you want to take that one off for me? I'll try. Amen. Well, Hello. Uh, can you hear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Getting thoughts together a little bit here. Um, well, first of all, um, they're saying in some studies that the emotional state of the mother mm -hmm. uh, has an influence of the embryo, the yes. infant, the baby, uh, how well they eat or yes. not eat, um, moods. However, that is, seems maybe less scientifically seem to affect um, the children's moves, but that's just an observation. It's not technical. Um, first of all, anything that's negative that the mother intakes is passed through the placenta yes, to the child. Um, so that can be influenced by medications, by Depression that can be yes. influenced by a lot of things. So I would really feel that the whole environment that the infant is in, what they can hear, supposedly, like music and things like that, they, that's just an, uh, something that's read about, that they're influenced by the environment greatly as well as the internal nature of the placenta and the mother's health. Does that answer somewhat? No, you basically just gave the all of the notes on the study that I looked at. <laughs> I'm you know, sure you, you I wonder if you or Sister Anita have hacked my notes or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, she is a treasure. She is a, just so Amen. much information and treasure. I yes. hope I gave a little bit. I'm sure you can add a lot more to it. And uh, I'm willing to listen to that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Amen. Lori said she feels that they also learn survival skills. Um, Absolutely. And it, what's interesting that Lisa and I was just talking prior to this Bible study, and we was talking about the oldest, AJ, we was talking about Elise and Ella, and their personalities are almost synonymous. The emotions, and Lisa, if you want to chime in, by all means, you know, feel free. Um, that the emotions, the, her emotional state at the time of pregnancy, you could play connected dots with the personality of the child. And if you ever met AJ, and if you ever met uh, uh, Lise, and if you ever met Ella, <laughs> you're going three different cardinal directions, <laughs> you know? And, 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 you know, but it's, you know, just to kind of say, well, here's what the experts are saying. But mothers are the experts, too, because they have seen with their own two eyes and they recall what they were going through. And, you know, just to put it back in the you know context of, the, you know, the Bible study. So. If I wasn't. Trained up in the ways that I should go, if I if that wasn't my setting in my house and it definitely wasn't mine. OK, so this is not a finger point. Um, so the, the, the point that I make is that everything that you said, mother, and everything that Lisa said, you know, they pick up, be it good or bad, mm -hmm. emotional, spiritual, um, 
Lori said, their emotional state, their survival skills. Yes, all of this is in this study. And there's like four different credible uh, references here. And they all pretty much agree um, with you who have had kids. So, you know, when we think about Athalia, and we know according to the text, the type of things that she grew up around, okay? There was no teachings of the Most High God. Like Sister Anita so eloquently put it, uh, her mother prayed to Baal. She worshiped Baal. Uh, when the prophets of God were spoken in her house, they were mocked and spoken of with disgust. Athalia inquired of murderers for advice. So when that, and this is why she's only in the womb. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And then last week, you know, we said, let's play, take a notional mirror and, and, and ask yourself, am I Athalia? And even though we didn't get a lot of feedback, mm -hmm. but it's still a legitimate question because yeah. here's what we have to be concerned about. When we talk about and even before I go there, let's go to scripture. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 9. And I'm going to read from verse probably 1 to 10. All right, so first Kings, and I'll read it. And I'm gonna read it in the NIV. Okay. So here you have that that's fine. That's that's you can keep it right there, King James. This I'll read, I'll read it, King James. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all of Solomon's desires, desire all of Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared to him at Gibeon and said, Lord, and the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever and my eyes and my heart should be there perpetually. And if thou will walk before me, as David thy father walked in integrity of the heart and in uprightness and do according to all that I have commanded thee and will keep thy statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever as I promised to David, thy father saying, there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if ye shall at all, now notice this, but if ye shall at all turn from me, following me, turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. Then I will cut off Israel out of the land, which I have given them, and this house, which I have hallowed for my name, will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And that this house, which is high, everyone that passeth by it shall be astonished and sh shall hiss. And they shall say, why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and unto this house? And they shall answer, because they forsook, excuse me, forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt. And have taken hold upon other gods 
and have worshipped them and served them. Therefore, have the Lord brought upon them all this evil. Let me say that part again. The Lord brought upon them all this evil. It doesn't say Satan. It doesn't say my husband. It doesn't say my wife. It doesn't say my mommy. It doesn't say my dad. It doesn't say my kids. And the Lord brought upon them all this evil. And I'll read verse 10 and I'll move on. And it came to pass at the end of 20 years when Solomon had built the two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house. And I'm going to stop there. So back then, we're talking about the temple. But we know today, in John chapter 2, Jesus said, if you destroy this temple, I will rebuild it in three days. So this goes right back to what Sister Nita is talking about. I could have been born into blessings or cursings, but I have a choice, choose you this day, to choose life or death, blessing or cursing that me or my child may live. Now, a lot of people say, well, brother, that's just Old Testament. Let's go to Romans chapter one. And I'm going to read verse 1 through 6, and then I'm going to jump down to verse 18. And here's what it says. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he hath promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience, for obedience, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 18 and 20. I'm 18 to the end, actually. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, so I want you to think about what we just read in 1 Kings chapter 9. If Paul, if, if Solomon was to walk away. For the wrath of God is revealed from, and this is the New Testament. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God have showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorify him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creepy things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness, through, and I want you know, when I read this part, I want everybody to think about what they're seeing today, how we dress, how we carry ourselves. Where for God 
also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections for their women did exchange the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lusts toward one towards another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with fallen unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So, now, let's go to Galatians chapter 15, and then we'll start, I mean, chapter 5. Do you have no Galatians 15? Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to start, we're going to start at the 18th verse. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, hearsays, envyings, murderers, murderers, drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of which of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the spirit, now we just said, if ye be led of the spirit, okay? And then you have Paul saying, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. I'll say that again. And they that are Christ. But we know that if we don't have the spirit of God, we're none of his. And they, that's Romans chapter 8, verse 9. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. All right. So here's where we are. We're talking about two seeds and two set of characteristics with each seed. We talk about how Athalia became so wicked. We talked about how it happened naturally, guilty by association, how it happened spiritually. It manifested through the blood from the fallen ones right on up to them and even to us. It didn't stop with them. 
And then we even talked about how we're born into sin and shape and iniquity, even when we're fetuses. But Sister Nita, who hacked into my notes, I'm sure, <laughs> and I'm not accusing, I'm not being an accuser of the brother, so forgive me for that. Okay. But just saying that, you know, we're definitely in agreement here. I don't have to submit to these things. I do not have to submit to and a lot of times when, you know, oh, this brother sister has this or that type of a problem. You know, the scripture says that light casts out darkness. So a lot of times if I just repent, let's make sure we unpack repent. If I change my ways and I make up in my mind and I pray to God and I even throw in a fast there, which would be who of us, especially when we're breaking generational curses to do that. And then the tests are going to come. No different from Jesus in Matthew chapter four. The tests are going to come. If thou be the son of God, eat from these rocks. Your dreams, are going to, you're going to be attacked in your dreams. You're going to be attacked naturally. You're just going to be attacked. But and then when you stand on the word of God, and you realize that all of those feelings that come upon you, be it anger, be it lust, you know, whatever it is, and they're just spirits trying to see if you really are who you say you are. And that includes rebellion. And we know God equates that to witchcraft. That includes lust. And if we put on the latter part of Galatians chapter 5, starting at the 22nd verse, but the fruit of the spirit is love. And love is the opposite of hate. Peace, as opposed to strife. Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. When we look in the mirror, and you've heard me say this before, you gotta be willing to rebuke everything that you see. In other words, let's empty the cup. And when we empty the cup, and what did Paul say? Everything I knew, delete it. Now, Lord, refill my cup with thy word, with thy peace, with thy love, with thy long suffering, thy kindness, thy full. And this is how we break that curse, Holy Rose. And the thing about the Holy Spirit, and I'm never going to stop saying it, if you go back in Acts chapter 2, verse 37, 38, and 39, the scripture says, when they ask that those who crucify Christ, men and brethren, what should we do? And it reads, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, every one of you, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, here's the part that those who seek the Holy Ghost is why I'm going to tell you never to fear. That's right. Because the scripture says, and this promise, mm -hmm. this is a promise from God, is to you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And you're going to have some of those kids and they're real rebel out there and they're hooting and hollering. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter. This is where your faith come in. It is written. This promise is to me and to my children. So you never lose hope. And the scripture says, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the last three. And these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Amen. So Amen. through love. We will um, break. Go ahead, sis. The word also tells us to tarry. Yes. To wait. Yes. Until the Holy Ghost comes because they tarried mm -hmm. in the spirit. It's coming. Yes. It's coming. You know, some are blessed to have it uh, openly in the church, even at baptism. Uh -huh. And I received the Holy Ghost. I was at home. Yeah. In my bed, talking to the Lord, and all of a sudden, 
I started speaking in tongues. All right. I spoke myself to sleep mm. and woke up the next morning still talking in tongues. All right. <laughs> Amen. But sometimes it it you you know what? It's going to come when God see the time yeah. is right for you to receive it. So don't get discouraged. Uh, you know, um, everybody don't, doesn't grow at the same pace. But there is growth. Amen. You know, you have early bloomers, you have late bloomers. But the key word is they bloom. So until that time come, we tarry, we wait, we continue to talk to the Lord, we continue to serve the Lord with gladness. And in that time, what time is that? God's time. God's because time. God's time. In that time, you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But until that time come, Terry, and don't give in. Continue to do what you're supposed to do for the Lord. You know what? A watch pot never boils. So as long as you're focusing on the Holy Ghost and you're that's all you focusing on, it's not gonna come. It'll come when you expect it. That's right doing what you're supposed to be doing unto the glory of God, he'll give it to you and, and you'll remember it. And you will remember it. So just tarry till the Holy Ghost reveals itself unto you. Amen. And never stop praying. That's right. Like must never stop fasting and be committed. Because I think when we start talking about Athalia and we compare ourselves and we say, what's the real problem here? Let's cut through the theolog theological or theological talk and let's let's condense. Where's the problem? And here's where a lot of people have problems at. Lust. I, you know, I, I can definitely speak intelligently for men. Lust. Obedience. You know, we read here in First Kings chapter nine, and here you have Solomon. You know, God said, tells him, "I heard your prayer. You know, this is how we're going to do this. We're going to be drinking buddies, and we're going to, you know, turn it out right." You get to First Kings chapter eleven, two chapters later, and all those women that God said, "Don't touch them." Have absolutely nothing to do with them. That's right. Solomon loses his mind. And God tells him. And I love the NIV version because in the NIV version, it tells him, Solomon, because this is your attitude, I will create your enemies against you. And these are the struggles you will now have. But we know that Solomon eventually repented because he comes back. And he writes in the book of Ecclesiastics and he tells us about vanity. He warns, especially men, Proverbs 5, Proverbs 6, and Proverbs 7. You know, when we talk to women about who can find a virtuous woman, and that's what King Lemieux's mother taught him. And there you have Proverbs 31. So you have King Lemieux's perspective on what a godly woman is. What a godly man and how not to fall for the, you know, seductive looks and the speech and, the, you know, and all those things that kind of puffs up your ego. Solomon. Now, when God said he won't send a novice, I don't know any man. They call it body count today. Um, 700 wives. 300 concubines. Maids and servants that were available to him. And his lessons that he teaches us men are specifically listed in Proverbs chapter 5, Proverbs chapter 6, and Proverbs chapter 7. So while you're tarrying, 
as Sister Nita is saying, whatever your struggle is, repent for it. That doesn't mean say, I'm sorry. That means turn away from it. Yeah. And remind God, he says, remind me of the things that I've said. Not because God forgot. He just want to make sure we know what he says, right? And this is when you say, Lord, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, Lord. Let your spirit be the strength of my weakness to overcome this very thing. And this very thing could be lust. Relax, gang. Obedience. Which, you know, I think when you start talking obedience and submission, I think you're talking about all coupled together here. And a lot of us struggle with these things. Lust, obedience, lust, obedience. Some of us struggle with pride. You ever notice, mm -hmm. notice that the scripture says the three battles that we have in this world are number one, lust of the flesh. Number two, lust of the eyes. Number three, the pride of life. Mm -hmm. You overcome, the scripture in Revelation says, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. That two out of three, 66.6% is lust. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. You overcome that, you just reduce the enemy's capabilities, 66.6%. The problem is, and then as he told, as he told Solomon in First Kings chapter nine, don't ever go back to those things. Yeah. The problem is, a lot of times we like these things, and we give that enemy, that demon, that spirit power every time. We, even though Christ will tell you, he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world, number one. Okay? Number two, the spirit is subject to the prophet. Jesus couldn't even have been born inside of Mary unless Mary said, it is so. Let it be as thou hast stated to the angel. So it takes our permission. We have to agree with the spirit whether it's the good spirit or the bad spirit. So as I look at Athalia, and I understand how she was raised, I want you to hear what our sister Anita said so eloquently, because it's in my lesson. You have a choice, and you have the power to say no. And when you look at the direction the world is going, men are as effeminate as they have ever been, number one. Number two, women and men are now professing. They don't need a man. They don't need a woman. Number three, there are no men, or there's very little men in the households these days. Might be the reason why a lot of men are effeminate these days. Who knows? But the world is going in the direction that's contrary to the way of the scripture. You heard Ella say last week, a young lady, 15 years old, who had already had sex with an entire football team. <laughs> so, you know, we think of Job. Job prayed for his kids just in case they might have fasted. I mean, they might have, because just in case they might have sinned. Make sure we as parents, grandparents, kids, prayers for one another, you know, because when we do things in the wrong spirit, all right, I'm going to live, you know, like a rebel, the rebel in the garden for six days in a week. But then when I want something, now I'm going to come to God and I'm going to be this prayerful person and fast. And if you read First Kings chapter 121, Ahab tried that. Mm -hmm. And God was going to bless him. <laughs> God was going to bless him because they had mm -hmm. stole this guy's land, him and Jezebel. But I just want to make sure that we're clear on what the fruit, you shall know a tree by its fruit. A good tree will not produce bad fruit. Now, can you every now and then get it wrong? But I'm talking about your historical and your consistent record. 
a good tree, let's put it in terms that we can understand. For those of us who desire a husband, for those of us who desire a wife, a good tree, talking about the people now, for a man, you're never going to have to tell him about what his responsibilities are mm -hmm. as far as taking care of his family. You're never going to have to tell him to provide for his family. You're never going to have to tell him to keep it in his, in his pants unless it's just for his wife. These are the things he, he's never going to put his fist, his hands on you. Okay. This is the fruit mm -hmm. of a good tree. You see what I'm saying? The problem is a lot of times in our choices, we do what Solomon did in first Kings chapter 11. We choose guys. We get caught up in the hair or the eyes, or she told me I was cute. We get caught up in all these physical attributes that has nothing to do with salvation. Mm -hmm. And just like with Delilah and Samson, not knowing that that very person who came into your life was sent from up above to either A, bless you, or B, curse you. Mm -hmm. The enemy has three objectives, kill, steal, and destroy. If the people that you have chosen in your life have either killed, steal or destroy any part of you. And then when I say part of you, I'm talking about Jeremiah 29 and 11. For well, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. If any person come into your life and you've allowed them to be in your life and this is what's going on, you made a bad choice. Mm -hmm. Now, and if you married them, then you pray God, <laughs> a way of escape or you roll the dice and say look lord this is this is this is forgivable okay because <laughs> i hear a lot of people you know they stay in america because well i don't not sure if they committed adultery look there's only one unforgivable sin god hates divorce but god also loves peace mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. if you are a man the scripture says in proverbs 31 you will never want for nothing. Mm -hmm. You don't got to tell your woman that you're thirsty, if you know what I mean. In its natural sense, you don't have to tell, you know, your man doesn't have to tell you or let you know that he's hungry. You don't have to tell you about your house clean. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Don't have to tell you to cook for, you know, just again, you should know a tree by its fruit. But before we go looking at other trees, first and foremost, let's mm -hmm. make sure when we look in the mirror, like we talked about last week, let's make sure that tree, it's everything that the word of God said that I'm supposed to be. Because if you ever come before me, and I know pastor is going to back this up 100%, and you want to be married, I'm going to say premarital counseling. And then my mm -hmm. recommendation to he who is certified to marry you if you can't if your fruit is not looking like that of the scriptures you get a thumbs down is that a permanent thumbs down no be it male or female but in other words we have a responsibility to make sure one what does the scripture say the spirit of the lord god is upon me mm -hmm. he has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek to bind up the brokenhearted, to open the doors to the captives and to set the captives free. So anything I say, anything that I'm a part of, to never put you in bondage. You, your children, your mother, your dad, your sister, your brother. Who is my mother? Who is my sister? Who is my brother? He who do the will of my father, which is in heaven. But I just want to be clear that there are two set of characteristics that follows each seed. There's the seed of the serpent, and it has its set of characteristics mentioned in Galatians. And then chapter 5, and then in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, these are the fruit or the characteristics of a good tree or a child of God. 
He tells him in the book of Solomon, I mean, in the first, in the book of first Kings chapter nine, Solomon, never go back to what you've been delivered from. Yes, God. On that note, does anyone have any questions? All righty. So we have, I see Stacy Claiborne. Stacy, how you doing? Good in yourself. Wonderful. Blessed. Okay. So we're on part five of a series called Athalia, Israel's first female monarch. Um, if you haven't, I don't know if you received the recordings. Do you receive the recordings? No, this is actually my first time on. I'm not Gia's mom. Um, uh -huh. And I actually do attend um, the Community's Christian Church in Warsaw, Virginia, under the direction of Pastor Alvin Hill. And, Amen. Um, she, so today was a day when I actually had to take my youngest to school. He's going to ODU, and Nigeria was with me. And uh -huh. she was like, well, mom, I'm going to get on Bible study. And most of the time when she's on Bible study, I'm at work or just getting off. So I was like, well, just send it to me. And um, so today is my first time, but I can get the information or the recordings or whatnot. If um, she can't send them to me, I can get Debriana or Bud or someone to send it to me. Amen. Amen. Well, on behalf of Dr. Van Wilson III, David Wilson III, we definitely extend uh, with open arms and we welcome you on behalf of Jubilee Apostolic Ministry. Welcome. Um, we hope that you do come back um, and thank you for coming out. Thank you. I um I did well in the process of me trying to get back home. Everybody under the sun was calling just to make sure, you know, that my youngest got off good. Nigeria was good, and everybody was okay. So I'm coming back up the highway. But prior to um my phone getting disconnected, I did I was listening to a portion where you are with, when you were referencing um the generational curses. Yes, and, and it's something that I've always said to my children um, that. Growing up, I saw a lot of things in my life as far as family members on both sides that were alcoholics, that were heavy on drugs and going through certain things in life, right? So yes. I tell my kids, you know, people always say, you you know, we can go out, we can go to the club, da, 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 whatever. And I'm like, you know, I did all that when I was in college. I'm beyond that. Um, so I even have coworkers that are saying to me, yeah, we're going to go out, we're going to get drinks. I said, okay, we're good. Enjoy to have fun. So they're like, you don't drink? I'm like, no, don't drink, don't smoke, never drink, never smoke, never indulge any, anything like that. So the question is always, well, why? I said, because I grew up seeing things and I had to break that curse because I didn't want my children to see me doing something and figure, oh, that's okay. So when I was listening to you saying, um, was it Dahlia? Was that the daughter? And Dahlia, yes. Dahlia was the daughter. And why was she, why? Was she the way that she was? And I heard, heard someone say, you know, like her mother, she had, she caught it bad on both sides, her mom uh -huh. and her dad. But <laughs> I'm a strong believer that, yes, you might catch it on your mom's side and you might catch it on your dad's side or you might catch it on both sides. But you mm -hmm. have to find it within yourself to choose the right side and go and, and break those generational curses. So mm -hmm. that was something that really, really um, was catching my attention. And then, of course, my phone went out and I'm like, okay, now... Oh, I miss that. But hey. I'm a strong believer that you have to, you have to learn, you have to find a way to break those curses. Because if you don't, it's going to continue to go forward and go forward and keep going and keep going as if we're going to become such a norm. So like I'm the abnorm in my family. I don't drink, I don't smoke. Everybody else does. But I didn't want my children to feel like because my mama do it, I think I should do it. The one thing they did pick up from me is going to church, living right, seeking the word of God, putting God before self, then you behind God and everybody else falls in order of that. That's something my mother instilled in me. I instilled in them. So that was one thing that I made sure that I made a generational curse, but not a curse, but made a generational thing for my children to know it's okay to be different. It's okay to be me. It's okay to say, I love God. It's okay to sing a gospel song it, it's these things are okay and maybe if i show my friends that these things are okay especially in this world maybe they'll probably follow suit and realize oh 
praising God really is dope. You know, listen to a gospel song really is lit. You, you, so these are the things that I've instilled in them. So that part really just, that's, it was meant for me to hear that part because Amen. I say this all the time that I had to break that curse because I didn't want my kids to feel like these were the norms and this was okay. You know, the, the point that I love about what you said is that when you say it's okay, and a lot of times, like, and don't get me wrong, once upon a time, I, I, I made sure I had my kicker and, you know, my, my <laughs> big sub woofer inside of a hatchback Mozart 7. So the only thing that could fit back there was my big woofer, you know, and, and, and to make sure people heard my music and knew when I was in the neighborhood. But here's the thing. But now, to your point, that when people are doing that and they're that bold for who they believe, but yet will be embarrassed to have on mm -hmm. a sermon that's being preached or taught or to be listening to gospel. And, you know, we don't want to be, do things outside of being decency and order, but at the same time, be just as bold. You see what I'm saying? And it is okay. Mm -hmm. Because what did he say? If you deny me before man, I will deny you before my father, which is in heaven. So I think it's um, absolutely 1%. I agree with you. We have to get better at speaking and representing what we believe in. I think we have fallen short uh, corporately and sometimes individually. We just don't promote, um, you know, on three different occasions. And I'll just think of two, the first two that come to my mind. You know, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to sift his wheat, but I pray for thee that thy faith fell not. And when strengthened, excuse me, when converted, strengthen thy brother. Okay, so number one, um, go ye therefore teach in all nations, baptizing them in the name, right? So we have a responsibility. And then the one that I just said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me to do what? To preach good tidings, to bind up the brokenhearted, to open the doors to the captives and accept the captives free. We have been commissioned to do this very thing to open up our mouths, to be bold, to go in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and when to become fishermen of men, so to speak. We have to do it, whether it's through our music, whether it's through our ministry, whichever way God puts it on your heart, we have to. We'll, because the only thing we're doing at the end of the day is restoring the kingdom of God. From the days of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, he created man in his image and his likeness. And since that time, the enemy has been trying to recreate the seed to what it wants it to be. So let's just make sure that as we go away today, that we purpose in our heart to make sure that, Lord, I got my, mate, I got my mind made up and I am committed to this fight to the end of time and even beyond. Anyone else have any thoughts or any questions that they want to ask? Um, I think my main my main thing for me was like um not being able to speak up, like because at first, like when I was younger, I wasn't one of those children who always spoke up about how I felt about mm -hmm. something, things like that. And it took for me to get older and realize that I can have my own back at first. Right. I can have my own back at first and speak up for myself. But then Satan just tried to use that same tactic against me. And he did for a while, especially like when it comes to prophetic words and things like that and being able to prophesy and tell someone this is what the Lord said. And I was so scared about being wrong. I was so scared like you are that people were going to reject it and things like that. And I had to understand like at the end of the day, this is not my words. These are not my words that I need to tell someone. This is the Lord's words. And this is the things that they need to hear this. And if I keep it's it becomes a time where it's like it's not even Satan in suppressing, you know, sending a spirit of suppression over me. It's myself. And I don't want to suppress the Lord's word. I, I just have to speak up. So last, um, well, Sunday was at Bible. I mean, Bible study Sunday school and I was speaking and I was just so, for some reason, it was just like a rush. <laughs> it was like a rush because uh -huh. 
I ended up having to cut my camera off because I was just doing like this with my hands because uh -huh. I was having yeah. a really rush because it was like the first time I felt like I genuinely spoke up on my own and the Holy Ghost didn't have to press me to be like, speak up, speak up, speak up. I just did it. And it was like a sigh of relief that I could actually <laughs> just speak the words that the Lord is telling me to speak without suppressing it. <laughs> Uh, a, a couple of thoughts on that, Gia. We, the more we study, the more we're going to learn. Man, I sure did get that one wrong. Let me give you a case in point, right? How about three months ago, we was on a Sunday school. And I was asked, what is a seer? And I said, a minor prophet, right? That's actually incorrect. I, I actually had it inverted. I have to invert that. A seer not only hears from God, but he sees, right? So I was wrong, okay? I was in a ballpark. Well, let's just call it for what it was. I was wrong. And, 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 and then you know how we all say David committed adultery, right? With Bathsheba, right? Well, come to find out that during their time, during their time, when men went to war, they did a certificate of divorce. And if the, he came back from the war and they executed, so it's a legal document. So they executed, right? And then if he came back from the war, then they could rip it up. The, the divorce was, you know, voided. However, however, so now, you know, we all, well, David committed, you see, you see where I'm going? The more you study, the boy, sure, I got that one wrong, <laughs> okay? You know, but there were some deeper things going. I won't get into that whole, you know, you know how we have those long conversations. Well, you know, but it's something to study about the certificate of divorce that was written for men when they went to war. Mm -hmm. So technically he didn't commit, you see what I'm saying? And, 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 and then when you have to come back and say, hey, guys, ladies and gentlemen, I had that wrong. It it's, but it's almost like a test in humility, a test in pride. Now, so I just wanted to address that, how it's OK to be wrong, especially when you have the right intentions. OK, the scripture is so deep. That, like I said, it's better than Game of Thrones. OK, so there's no way. And the scholars don't even agree on most of it. OK, so and here we are. Right. So that's that. Right. Here's the other thing. When my sister was on here, when she comes back on here, a lot of y'all don't believe this. And I know my wife don't believe this, okay? I used to be the most shy, the most bashful. I didn't want to be left with my cousins. I didn't want, the first day of school, Newark, New Jersey, my mama put me in a green laser shoe, right? This is in the 70s, right? So then when you're the new kid and your mama's bringing you to school, and if I heard one, I would burst out in tears. Okay, I was that, and my wife would tell you I'm still that sensitive, but, but just saying, but the process from humble beginnings, and when you know it's the Holy Ghost, we think of Peter, right? Peter denied Jesus three times before the rooster crowed, but when he got Acts 1 and 8, power to become a witness, he starts speaking boldly, and he had no such problem. So, and, and it's always a wonderful thing, so we don't ever get it twisted, that I can make a distinction between, okay, that's me, but that, that ain't me, that's God. You see what I'm saying? And come to find out, that would be another thing I got wrong, come to find out, yeah, that was God too, okay? So all said to say that it's just Jesus in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, when you look at different variations of what it says there, but basically, here's what they're saying. Jesus grew daily in wisdom and stature and understanding and knowledge. So when you're going full speed ahead, you know, we, we're going to get it wrong, sis. But here's the thing. I don't think any of us are going to go to hell for having a zeal to do God's, you know, his, his will. And we got our theology wrong when half of the theology that's out there 
It's just, you know what I'm saying? You really have to dig because think about it, what we just said about David. But now I just do a curveball at everybody and I hope everybody fact check me. Pull out your cell phones, check to see if it's true because this is how iron is to iron. So is one man to another. We sharpen each other. And as long as we're sharpening, and as long as we're going out there and winning souls into Christ and being lovers of one another in the right context, not in the wrong context, may God get the glory for all that we do, even when we get it wrong. Because you know why? Because what did he say? And we know that all things work together for good. Yes, Two yes. stipulations. Those who love him and those are called according to his purpose. Those he foreknew, he also predestined to do what? To conform. Yeah into the image of the only begotten son who was the firstborn among many brethren. And we are the brethren and sister, if you will. So it's okay. It's okay. Any other thoughts, any other questions? All righty then. Well, look at what time it is. <laughs> it is only 8.31. On that note, if there is one, that has not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. We know that people have been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 19, verse 1 through 7, there were certain disciples. They have been baptized, and they were baptized through John's baptism. Paul didn't tell them you did it wrong. He That's said cool. you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ as he explained to them what John's baptism was. Mm -hmm. repentance amen when Repent. they heard this mm -hmm. when they heard this they were baptized in the name of jesus christ absolutely because they couldn't so be baptized in jesus go name ahead, when jesus had come and left because while he was there there was no need because he was among them amen so because uh because um John was preparing the way for Jesus. His baptism was in repentance. Yes. And then after he baptized Jesus, he didn't baptize anymore. That's right. Because Jesus was there. And today we need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Because of what he's done for us. So there's Amen. no no longer animal sacrifices for forgiveness of sin. That's right. Uh, the shedding of blood, uh, that is why they call Jesus the precious lamb of God. Yes. And that is why the blood still works. It is still covering us. Ever yes. flowing. It has not lost its power. Amen. And just to be clear, there are people who believe, oh, when I confess with my mouth and believed in my heart that Jesus was Christ was Lord, that's when I received the Holy Spirit. We were just talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist received the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. That's right. Jesus received the Holy Spirit in Matthew chapter 4. Mm -hmm. The disciples received the Holy Spirit. Some of them received it in John, I think it's either chapter 21 or 22 when he blew on them and they received. Mm -hmm. And then they spoke with new tongues in Acts chapter two. Mm -hmm. There were certain disciples who have been baptized in John's baptism, like Sister Nita just finished you know, presenting, but they hadn't been baptized in the name mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. The scripture is real clear. Acts chapter four, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Yeah, for there is no other name under heaven. Yes. All because of what Sister Nita just said. Because of what he did. He died. Yes. You see what I'm saying? He died. He descended. Took the keys and then ascended. Stopped. Yeah. So his whole act of what he did. Mm -hmm. And authority and power. When he ascended, he said all authority and power have been given unto me. And in Matthew chapter 10, in Luke chapter 10, at the 19th verse, in Luke chapter nine, at the first verse, he gives us back that power. 
-hmm. This is the restoration of the kingdom of God. Yes, but God. you got to have the spirit. Mm -hmm. Acts, excuse me, Romans chapter 8, verse 9. For if you do not have the spirit of God, then mm -hmm. you are none of his. Mm -hmm. So this is why we do altar call to extend the opportunity to say, if there's one, we'll come to you or we'll arrange for you to come to us. But we will baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. What church mm -hmm. you go to, that's your business. But if you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, that's God's business. Ezekiel chapter three tells me, if I don't tell you these things, then I'm held accountable and your yeah. blood is on my hands. That's so right. I have to tell you, so your blood <laughs> won't be on my hands. Oh, yes. I gotta tell you. So is there's yeah. one or two that has not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. We give this moment to you. Mm -hmm. We open up the floor. If you haven't, we open up the floor. If someone desires prayer, this is altar call. Is there anyone here that would like prayer or someone who has not received the Holy Spirit or someone who has not been baptized in Jesus' name? Thanks know to pray that this doors be open and the captives be set free during this time. We'll give you the moment of silence while you defeat the spirit of pride and come forth. All right, well, we won't keep you waiting. If anybody has any questions about anything that I said, the number, my number, and pastor's number is on the website, jubileeapostolicministry.org. If you have any questions about anything, it might not be on this. Do not hesitate. And before you leave, for those who write their minds teased, here's what I offer you. In, in Psalm 75, the scripture says, yeah, I'll go there. It's talking about promotions. And it says, <laughs> it does not come from the south, the east, or the west. Mm -hmm. We know that there's four major cardinal directions. We're not going to throw in the northeast, the southwest, and you know, just north, southeast, and west. How come it leads out the north? So let me read Psalm 75 to you, and then I'll let you go. And like I said, you, you can give with me whenever you want to, okay? Let me see. All right, let's go to the King James Version. Okay, so Psalm 75 and verse 6 says this, For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Verse 7 says, But God is the judge. He put up down one and set up, up another. If anyone can elaborate on that, I might even have a reward if you could speak and basically be in a ballpark about this. Because this, if the answer is the right answer, you're going to find out that this opens up doors like you have no idea. Okay, I'll give you that. Um, Sister Nita, would you like to pray us out, please? Amen. Our heart, hearts and minds are together. And we've humbled ourselves once again. Thank you, brother. For that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lesson that you gave us tonight. We want to say happy birthday to uh, Brother Gary. He has a yes. birthday on tomorrow. And uh, Brother Adams and his wife had an anniversary. Yes. And uh, if we've missed anyone, we ask you to charge it to the head and not to the heart. 
because they're still gathering information. Um, with that being said, let me continue with my prayer. Father God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for opening up your word to us, God, and giving us a revelational knowledge to bring us closer to you and get a deeper, richer understanding of who you are and just yes. how awesome your word is and how deep it runs. Thank you, Lord, that we can count it joy that even when we mess up, you have made a way of escape for us. Thank you, Jesus. If we would just take it. All is not lost. We haven't crossed every T and dotted every I, God, for all have sinned yes, and Lord. fallen short of the glory of God. But yet you have made a way of escape for us. Thank you, Jesus. And for that, we can count it all joy. Yes. We can go to Romans 8, 28 and 29. All the bad things that we've been through. All yes. the things that have come through our life. It came to get us to this place tonight. Yes, hallelujah. Closer to you, God. Thank you, Lord. Because as long as the sun is shining, as long as the money's flowing, as long as the car is working and we have a roof over our head and food to eat and clothes for our back, we act like we have gotten it all and we have arrived. But the minute the storm clouds rise, yes, we run to you, God. And you tell us it doesn't have to be like that. Thank you, Jesus. Because you're a God that's with us in the lean times as well as... Mm, The same God that meets us on the mountaintop is the same God that will meet us in our valley. Yes. And we shouldn't just come to him when we're in a valley experience. We ought to give him glory and praise. Oh, hallelujah. Everything. Yes. Because he's the God of every circumstance. Yes, he is. He sticketh closer than a brother in those down times, but he is right beside us in the high time. Yes. He promised to never leave nor forsake us. Thank you. What must we do to connect with you, God, so that when you call us back unto yourself, yes. our name is written in the Lamb's book. Hallelujah. The word tells us to come all ye that are burdened and heavy laden and he will give you rest yes. for your soul. Take his yoke upon you, a faith exchange. Thank you, Jesus. Give him your mess for his redeeming love. He's here to give us a faith exchange. And if we're smart, we'll grab it. will learn more of him and desire to know more of him. Continue to guard our hearts, God. Continue to strengthen Brother Ellis Graves. Thank you, Jesus. Continue to keep his mind sharp and dedicated to studying the word of God. Yes. So he can bring it to a hungry group of children that desire to know you more into me, I see intimacy. Into me, I see you, God. Yes, sir. All the more closer so that we can walk closer to you as Enoch did. Yes. Lord, I desire to walk so close to you where I'm not even seen anymore. It's just you. We ask that you bless each and every one under the sound of my voice on this evening. 
Give that mother traveling mercies and safe passages as she dropped her baby off the school and is en route going yes, home. Lord. Thank and you, Jesus. Bless her children, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bless all of your children that are on the line. Thank you, Holy Jesus. Soul, God, give her a boldness. Yes. And let her know that in everything there is a season. Yes. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 tells us in all things, there is a season to everything. Yes. And today, this is your season because you're growing. And some things doesn't benefit you anymore. You've outgrown it and it's okay to move forward. Continue to tarry until the Holy Ghost meets up with you. Continue to bless each and every one of these students, God. Yes. As only you can. Continue to bless mothers and fathers that are providing for their families. Father, bless the mothers, the grandmothers, the grandfathers, the fathers, the children that call you Abba Father. Yes, Lord. For you are the supplier, the source, and the resource. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise for you and you alone are worthy. Worthy is the lamb that was slain for my benefit. Yes. We love you, Lord, and we thank you, God. And we ask that you continue to strengthen us, Lord. Yes. For we need thee right now, God. As never before, Lord, please do not take your hand away from us. Keep us surrounded. Keep us with thee. Yes. For we can do nothing without you, but God, we know that with you, nothing is impossible. We ask for continued blessings on each and every one in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I just saw Sister Claiborne. She said, uh, the North is not mentioned because that is where God resides. This is where his blessings, grace, and mercy comes from above. This is where promotion comes from. Promotion is God's plan. All right, sis. Well, give me say, have G or give me your address. It will it will nah, the, the promotions come from the north. Yes. Promotions now. Absolutely. Here's what I encourage every single one of you to do. And I say this in all seriousness. Make sure you check out and study what comes from the other cardinal directions. Did Jesus not speak to the winds to rebuke them? Absolutely. Number one. Okay. Number two, when you go back and read Ezekiel chapter 37, would it God tell Ezekiel to prophesy? And them dry bones. And to the dry bones. And then he and spoke to bones. and then he spoke to the winds to breathe breath into his okay. Learn when to stay in witchcraft. This is learning how to fight spiritual warfare, especially when mm -hmm. something comes to it's in Ezekiel 37, Gia. Ezekiel 37, it'll tell you exactly what, and it's a process. We're yes, brought, yeah, we amen. We're brought dead life, and I tried mm -hmm. one day. Just I was in Thailand, and I was just said, kind of sorry. You said Ezekiel chapter what again? Thirty-seven. I encourage everybody to learn it, and when you learn it, learn how to fight spiritual warfare with it. This is how we learn. 
This is how we grow. Yes, this sir. is what Hebrews chapter 5 and Hebrews chapter 6 is talking about. At the end of Hebrews chapter 5, we're no longer babes in Christ. In other words, we've been in here this long and we're still drinking milk, something wrong. Okay? Yeah. It's time to grow and learn spiritual warfare. All right, I'm done. All right? I can't wait to hear the testimonies. All right, this concludes our session. Thank you, everybody, for being a part. Make sure you send me Sister Claiborne's address here, and <laughs> we'll send her a gift card, all right? Amen. Amen. Oh, by the way, right. I want to send all of the recordings out Sunday. I'm going to send all of them together. Is that okay? That's fine. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. God bless, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Gia. Good night. Thank you very much. You did awesome, everybody.